Hello everyone, I'm Kara Minowy and this is Shell Point Today for the weekend of September 20th, 21st, and 22nd. On today's show, we stop by the salon for a look at the latest makeup from Robin Church that'll keep you looking beautiful. But first, we want to remind you about a trip to a great photography exhibition opening this weekend. Camera USA National Photography Exhibition and Award 2014 opens tomorrow at the Von Liebig Center. This annual competition shows off works by some of the best photographers in the country. Pickups for this trip start at 12.45, returning back to Shell Point around 4.45. The cost is $18 and a snack is provided. On Sunday, the hilarious Peter Sellers classic comedy film, The Pink Panther, will be showing in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. Check out all the laughs on Sunday, beginning at 2.30 p.m. And a reminder about a very powerful discussion you'll want to attend. A LifeQuest discussion group with Dr. Chris Vadalato will take place next Saturday, September 27th. Dr. Vadalato will tackle the topic of depression and the pursuit of happiness in one's life. Truly, a discussion you don't want to miss. That takes place next Saturday, September 27th at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. And now, Robin Church from the Shell Point Salon is here to tell the ladies about a new product to help keep you looking your best. Hi, my name is Robin. I'm the salon manager here at Shell Point, And I just wanted to let you know about another new product that we have in the salon now. It has joined our Mirabella makeup line, and it is the Mirabella Cream to Powder. Um, this is really nice if you like a lighter foundation but still want a little bit of coverage and at the same time reduce some of the shine without leaving a dry cakey finish. So it comes with a little sponge or you can use it with a foundation brush and you just kind of put it on just like that. And see how it's kind of translucent in a way, it's got nice coverage. It doesn't settle into any kind of wrinkles or lines, which is nice. It's the, that's a more of a quality makeup that will do that and not settle into those lines. If you have any questions about the Mirabella Cream to Powder, please give us a call. We'd be happy to help you select just the right shade. And consultations for makeovers are always complimentary. It's really a lot of fun to come in and just have some time set aside where we can go through some shades and find just the right combination for you. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye. Coming up, we are going to replay some of the best stories from earlier this week on Shell Point Today. But before we do that, let's cover all of this weekend's happenings, Academy News, menus, and church news. Welcome to the weekend edition of Shell Point's Happening segment. I'm Bev Chandley, and I'm here with Mary Franklin. This is where we go over the activities for you for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're going to start out Friday morning and at 8.15 with the stamp ministry in the stamp room on the island. And at 8.30, until 11.30, you'll see the Friday marketplace in the administration courtyard. 9 o'clock is the time for match play tennis. It's men's this day, and they'll be down at the Woodlands Tennis Court. 9.30, you'll find Canasta and Samba, both in the Woodlands Commons. That's up on the second floor. 10.15, the Mile Yacht Sailing Club will be at the Woodland Commons Lake. We're going to jump to 12.30 now for the Mixed Progressive Bridge. That's in the game room of the Woodlands. Advanced Table Tennis will be down in the Tarpon Room at 1.15. Also at 1.15, it's the quilters. They'll be in the Osprey room on the island. 1.30, we have Vespers at the community room of the Arbor. 2 o'clock, it's time for Bid Euchre. That's in the Sable room at the Woodlands. Latin size will be held down in the Health Club on the island at 2.30. And we have a second Vespers at 2.30 as well. This is in the community room of King's Crown. And a 3.30 Vespers at the Springs. We have a 645 game night at the Resident Activity Center. Always fun. Grab some friends, head on down, and have a good time. And here's Mary to go over Saturday for you. No better way to start your Saturday morning than to hit the courts. Pickleball will be played at 8 a.m. right outside the Resident Activity Center. Round Robin Doubles Tennis will be played at 8 as well at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. And 9.30, both the men's and the women's doubles will hit the courts at the Woodlands. 
All right, enough of the courts. We're heading inside for 945 Duplicate Bridge in the Manatee Room. We have a wonderful trip planned today. It's the Camera USA National Photography Exhibition and Award 2014 trip. The court pickup will begin at 1245 on the island, 1255 at the Woodlands, and 105 at Eagles Preserve. At one o'clock, chess will be played in the library lounge of the Resident Activity Center. And then you have two choices at 115, Scrabble in the library lounge and table tennis in the tarpon room. Basic line dancing will take place in the health club on the island at 315. And duplicate bridge wraps up Saturday evening with 630 in the manatee room on the island. Bev, you have Sunday information for us, don't you? I sure do. At 9 o'clock, we're going to have our morning worship service in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. And again, we have our morning worship service at the Grand Cypress at 11 o'clock. And our evening service will be in the Social Center, and that's at 615. Well, we just want to wish you all a wonderful weekend, and we will see you back here next week. Hi, I'm wishing you a happy weekend. I'm Terry Koloth with some new classes coming up in the Academy of Lifelong Learning next week. On Monday, Facebook Basics on the iPad with Meg Singer of Teledora. On Tuesday, the Race for Colonial Malaya with Professor Adrian Kerr and I Work Spreadsheets with Penny Modrich of Nautilus. We also have the Patient Portal with Dr. Carol Clark, ARNP, here at Shell Point Medical Center, and Tara Hazard, our Informatics Specialist at Shell Point. Also a Computer College class, Where Did That File Go? with Al Kaplan of Oakmont. On Wednesday, we have Painting a Self-Portrait with Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve, and our first Legacy Seminar this session, Tax Facts with Michelle Hoover, CPA of Alexander and Hoover CPAs, and Timothy A. Stevenson, Executive Director of our Legacy Foundation. On Thursday, Penny Modridge of Nautilus will present Dropbox. And Dr. Sue Stranahan, our Director of Spiritual Services here at Shell Point, will present Desert Mothers and Fathers. Menus for your weekend. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter on Friday is fish and chips with coleslaw and baked beans. The dinner special is the Seafood Buffet for $15.95, and the soup of the day is lobster bisque. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a French dip with onion rings for $7.25. The dinner special is Chef's Choice for $8.25. On Saturday, the Crystal Room is closed. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Saturday, the special is a Philly cheesesteak with chips for $7.25. The dinner special is baked Italian meat calzone with garlic bread and cauliflower for $8.25. On Sunday, the Crystal Room features its Sunday brunch for $17.50. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Sunday, the special is a bacon, egg, and cheese English muffin with fresh fruit for $7.25. And the dinner special is Chef's Choice for $8.25. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, Randy Woods, and here with Pastor Andy as we look forward to the weekend sharing together. Here it is, the end of September, two more weeks to go for our worship services in the woodlands before we return to the sanctuary. And again this week, we're continuing our study in Hebrews, racing right along to chapter 6. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Yes. <laughs> we, and we have had a good time in the woodlands. We really have. Uh, it's, been, it's been enjoyable in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we'll be glad to get back to the sanctuary, newly yeah. renovated sanctuary. But, uh, um, you know, we've, we've enjoyed a little different setting, a little different mm -hmm. way of con connecting with people, and that's been fun. Been that's right. Good. The yeah. congregation, the community has been so gracious and just making the adjustment that's and right. being part of very supportive. That's right. But as we continue this Sunday, services mm -hmm. at 9 and 11, and we're continuing the book of That's Hebrews, right. right? The superior yeah. superiority of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And chapter 6 this week. Is That's right. We land. Yeah, chapter 6 is interesting because, you know, yeah. for, for people who know something about the Bible and uh, people who are experienced uh, in their faith uh, for some, some years, uh, you know, if you tell people, I'm going to teach through the book of Hebrews, uh, it's funny how many people will say immediately, 
well, what do you think about chapter six? You know, they'll completely skip the first five chapters mm -hmm. and they'll want to know what you think about chapter six because it's a controversial chapter. Yeah. And it raises some uh, fascinating sort of theological questions about which the church has been divided over centuries. So it's, uh, sort of, it's difficult to sort of sort out what, what the text means. Uh, there is a sense in which there are lots of places in, in the scriptures that are very clear, mm -hmm. but there are also some, some places in, in scripture that uh, uh, are not necessarily quite as, uh, as transparent as we would like them to be, and they're mm -hmm. subject to a number of different interpretations. And this particular passage deals with the issue of apostasy, which means falling away. What does it mean to fall away? Can you fall away? Uh, what, what kind of people do fall away? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the prospects for <laughs> such a person? What, what's the purpose of that warning? And so that's what raises all of these kinds of issues. It's a fascinating subject. So why didn't we just jump ahead to chapter 7? Yeah, I just can't do it. <laughs> I, just can't, I just can't skip it. But you know, it's interesting. Because, uh, we appreciate that. Yeah, it's that, important that we yeah. go through the difficult yeah. Study. Well, the interesting thing, and I, I want people to understand this, I think as we study a book like we, like we are, we understand something about the context, the flow of thought, uh, what the author wants to accomplish in something, and when you understand the context and where chapter 6 fits into that whole flow of thought, I quite frankly don't think it's all that difficult. I think it's, it'll be clear and easy to understand what the author intends us to get from that particular passage. Okay. And uh, so I'm looking forward to a really, uh, I think, uh, interesting, encouraging, as well as challenging uh, time together. Yeah. Well, it has been, and I, I appreciate that. And as well, then on Sunday night, you've been teaching through the parables as we're preparing to go back into the sanctuary and just being uh, refreshed, renewed, committed mm -hmm. to the Christ whom we love in a way that will be appropriate That's right. for coming back together and continuing to grow. We're calling them parables of preparation yes. because I think it's important you go through a construction project that's easy to sort of get swept up in the, in the details, the design, the architectural features, the functionality, all those kinds of things that we've been uh, focusing on. Uh, but the real issue is our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, what, where are we with the Lord? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we want to make sure that we're prepared spiritually uh, to inhabit a place that uh, God has graciously prepared for us to worship. And God has been good. Uh, we look forward to getting into the building in October. But here this weekend, again, we invite you to join us Sunday morning in the Woodlands at 9 or 11 o'clock. And there's a fellowship time between the services. That's been really nice to get a chance to visit with folks and share some refreshments together. Then Sunday night, the service is at 615 in the social center at the island. So it's going to be another wonderful weekend as we worship together at the Village Church. I trust you'll join us as we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. Now, a look back at some of the best stories from the past week. We heard from Anna Smith at Feinmark Bank about their fifth anniversary celebration taking place next Wednesday. Hello, I'm Anna Smith, Managing Executive with Feinmark on the Island. I am excited to announce Feinmark is celebrating its fifth year on the island. We have enjoyed every minute of being here and now we want to say thank you. Everyone is invited to join us for our anniversary celebration on Wednesday, September 24th from 8 to 9.30 in the morning. We will have a tent set up in the bank courtyard on the island with some light refreshments and wonderful conversation. We have a number of special guests attending the event. Susan Chacon, the original managing executive of Finemark on the Island, is flying in from Arizona to be with us. And Tiffany Williams, our most recent managing executive before I arrived, will also be on hand for the celebration. Our president and CEO, Joe Caddy, will be here as well to say a few words to our guest. We are grateful for the relationships we have with so many Shell Point residents. We hope you join in the celebration with us. Again, it's Wednesday, September 24th from 8 to 9.30 a.m. in the bank courtyard on the island. You do not need to RSVP. Everyone is welcome, and we hope to see you all there. If you have any questions, please stop by Finemark, or you can always give us a call at 461-5999. Mary Franklin told us about a great new way for you to do your grocery shopping without leaving the comfort of Shell Point. 
Hi, I'm Mary Franklin from Resort Services, and we are pleased to announce that we have a new service coming your way. It is a grocery service. Daily Bread is a company that you can order your groceries, and they do the work for you. They will pick up, go to the grocery store, make all your purchases for you, and then deliver it to your home. And today we have the owner, Ron Viers, here today to tell us all about this wonderful new service here at Shell Point. Thanks for being here today, Ron. Thanks for having me, Mary. What a wonderful service for our residents here at Shell Point. Um, sometimes, you know, being able to go get out, have somebody else go get your groceries can help in many different ways. One, Lots of family coming into town, and maybe you don't have the time right. to go, or you want to spend time with them instead of running out and getting the groceries. Mm -hmm. um, or you know, maybe let's say you're rehabbing, and you maybe not have that energy to go get your groceries. They can go and do that for you. You will take care of that. Exactly. Or, you know, our residents are so busy here. Take that grocery shopping off the to-do list and you can help them out, correct? That's right. Uh -huh. We, we uh, deliver to many different people with many different needs. Some people need the time with their family. Mm -hmm. Some people uh, don't have the ability to get to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we meet all those needs. Okay. Now it's very easy. I've actually, there's three different ways that people can place their orders with you. One of which is the website. And I myself have went to the website and if I can figure it out, anybody can. Um, mm -hmm. It reminded me of when you go and you check yourself out at the grocery store. When you exactly. go through the self-service line, you're just pointing and touching. Is that what it's designed after? Pretty much the way it works. You just go to shopdailybread.com mm -hmm. and you shop a virtual grocery store okay. with um, you know grocery aisles. Mm -hmm. You go to the dairy aisle and you click on milk or click on eggs, click on butter and so on and so forth. And at the end, you just click on checkout. It's oh. just like going to the self-serve at, you know, at Publix. Okay. The other way they can call it in to you, correct? That's and right. And you'll go through the grocery list with them. Or you can type it out and email it. Right. Right. It's uh, online by email or by phone. Okay. So three ways to order. It couldn't be easier. All right. And when you're making your selection, you know, I'm a finicky peanut butter eater. Mm -hmm. And so I could order Jif, whatever ounce I want creamy, I can order what exactly what I want, right? Right. Online, um, you're given the ability to put in options mm -hmm. like the size, the brand, mm -hmm. um, particular type, or there's even a box for adding special instructions. Okay. So you can be very specific or very nonspecific and, you know, we'll fill the order for you, okay. but it's very user-friendly. So you can even choose to get the Publix brand versus the name brand. Exactly. Okay, that's great. Now, um, when I was on the website, I noticed the pricing's right there. How do you determine, because as we know, the, the prices of avocados change every time you go to the grocery store. How do you determine that? Well, basically, I shop several local stores on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I'm monitoring the prices on a daily basis. So, um, you know, one week an item may be two ninety nine a pound, mm -hmm. and the next week it's up to three forty nine a pound. Right. So I simply have to go in and, and manually update the prices. You know, based on the prices I'm seeing in the grocery stores locally here. Okay. Your number one store that you go to and most requested is Publix. Is that Publix, correct? Absolutely. But you do hit a few others if requested? Oh, absolutely. We shop at Walmart, Target, Fresh Market, you know, wherever the customer wants us to shop. Okay. That sounds good. Now, so you have the cost of your groceries, which is just there, and then there's a delivery fee. Is that correct? That's and correct. how does that work? Normally, the delivery fee with our service is $20, mm -hmm. but in partnering with Shell Point, mm -hmm. all the residents and staff get 50% off, right. so the delivery fee is only $10 plus tax. And that's just not the first time. That's, that's, that's here to stay. That's here to stay. Okay. As many orders as you want to place, you can place you know, two, three orders a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just going to be $10. Okay. And how much turnaround? Let's say I wake up in the morning, maybe I'm not feeling too good, but I need some food in my home. Um, how, how much turnaround time do you need? If you place an order online, mm -hmm. um, typically we can get it to you within two hours. Okay. 
Now, if you phone in your, your grocery list, it may take a little longer, but we can still do same day. Okay, that's good to know. So by the end of the day, you can have your your pantry restocked and something in the refrigerator. Right. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Ron, thank you for being here today and also coming out here to offer this service to the Shell Point residents. I am sure that they're going to appreciate this service. You're very welcome. We are very excited about partnering with Shell Point and you know, being a, a service to them. Well, great. Thank you, Ron. And if you would like more information about the Daily Bread Grocery delivery service. We have the pamphlets at either of the service desk. You can pick them up there. You can call their business phone number is 239-313-1488 or you can always log on to www.shopdailybread.com. I'm Mary Franklin along with Ron Viers. Make it a great day. Terry Kolath spoke with Professor Adrian Kerr about next week's academy class, The Race for Colonial Malaya. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath. I'm here with Professor Adrian Kerr to talk about two of his classes coming up in this fall semester. The first one is A Race for Colonial Malaya, and the second is The Growth of Kuala Lumpur. Thank you for joining me, Professor Kerr. Thank you, Terry. It's always a pleasure to be at Shell Point. This is a very fascinating part of the world, and we're so glad that you're going to take us from one part of it to the next. It's probably the least known of the Far East countries. People know where Thailand and roughly where Burma is, Indonesia, Borneo, Vietnam, Cambodia. And Malaysia is one of these um, un <laughs> unloved, if you like, geographical areas. And it's a peninsula um, south of Thailand, and it also incorporates parts of the island of Borneo. Um, and it's a fairly new-ish country post uh, Second World War, um, but its history goes back um, to the Middle Ages. And if you're in Europe in the Middle Ages, um, you're not buying flat screen TVs or Cadillacs, you want spices. That's the luxury product of the time. Uh -huh. So anybody of middle class and above throughout the um, Europe, and then of course that spreads over to the United States, they wanted spice, and spice for a number of reasons. And so there's a huge demand for luxury products, and they were costing the same price as silver. So this was a very special product. So um, preservatives. It was a type of preservative, but it made it more palatable. Yeah, so sure when it was going bad and tasting foul, uh -huh. you pep put some pepper or clove or nutmeg on it and it tasted okay. And so okay. The, ex the demand for these um, spices goes back to Roman times. I mean, the um, spices were being traded between China and Indonesia, the Spice Islands, um, back in the Ming time and the earlier time than that. So for a thousand years, these have been traded to the Chinese and also in the Roman times, spice came from India, pepper. Okay. Um, of course, anybody who controlled the spice trade was a wealthy person. And uh, the first people to discover spice in the Far East, of course, were the great Arab traders who swept out of um, Saudi Arabia 700 AD and kept going east. And that's why there's so many Islamic people. Indonesia is the biggest Islamic country uh, in the world because uh, they exported their religion to um, um, to Indonesia, uh, 800, 900, 1000 AD. Um. The Malaysia area, of course, didn't have this quite the same contact and therefore is predominantly um, Buddhist today. Um, and there is Islamic presence, uh, it's 50-50. Oh. Um, but Malaysia um, and the, the peninsula of Malaya, and Singapore is at the bottom of that uh, peninsula, and we'll talk about that in a separate session, um, was the stopping off point for the Portuguese who were determined to get a stranglehold on the spice trade. So you see the Portuguese setting up some camp in Malaya Laka, which is a famous old uh, uh, city in uh, Malaya, and then moving on to the Spice Islands where the spice was growing, and then using sandalwood uh, also to supplement their profitable trade. Well, you can imagine in the Middle Ages that people weren't happy that the Portuguese had a stranglehold on this valuable trade, right. and so the next people to um, move into the picture were the Dutch, and they effectively kicked the Portuguese out, and Portugal went into decline. So the Dutch then became the uh, major player uh, in the area, and of course we now we remember that the Dutch made a great empire in Indonesia, the Batavian Empire, which lasted until the Second World War. So the next people on the scene were the British, and they were expanding out of India, and they didn't like the idea that the, um, the Dutch should have it their own way, and so there was this tension between the Dutch and the English as to who would control 
central Malaya. And the story of colonial Malaya is taking advantage of the natural uh, resources, which became this, the, the foundation of the country, which was rubber and tin. And so the growth of rubber, in fact, and tin was the, the, the foundation of the modern state of Malaya. And uh, at one time, 90% of the world's rubber came out of Malaya, and it was controlled by British uh, colonial interests. So it's been a fascinating um, business and uh, travel story for over 400 years. Fascinating. Well, we look forward to that. It's a pleasure, Terry. So we encourage you to come to both of these classes. The first one is on September 23rd, Race for Colonial Malaya, and the follow-up class, the growth of Kuala Lumpur will be October 7th. As always, you can sign up right at the door for Professor Adrian Kerr's classes, and we hope to see you there. We had a visit from Shell Point Medical Center's Tara Hazard and nurse practitioner, Dr. Carol Clark, who gave us a look at the new Easy Access Patient Portal. Hi everyone, I'm Terry Colette. I'm here today with two very special people, Tara Hazard, Shell Point's Infomatics Specialist, <laughs> and Dr. Carol Clark, our ARNP and our own medical center. And we're talking about something brand new for Shell Point that you're going to be very curious about. It's called Patient Portal or Easy Access. And we're talking about a way you can come and find out more information in the Academy of Lifelong Learning. Thank you for joining me, ladies. Thank you for having Thank us. You. All right, Patient Portal Easy Access, brand new to us. What is that, Tara? The Patient Portal is an online, 24-7 way for residents to access their healthcare information and they can communicate with their healthcare team at the medical center. It is HIPAA secure and government certified, so you can feel comfortable in that there's a security involved in this new product. Okay, we've all heard some of those words that you're talking about, and now we're gonna bring it home to Shell Point. And why are we doing this at Shell Point, Carol? Why are we doing this at Shell Point, and why now? Well, actually, there's a huge historical piece to this story. For the last 30 years, the officials in health at the highest levels in our government have been crying out that our health care costs have just expanded exponentially. Mm -hmm. And yet we had some of the lowest outcomes in the world for wellness, even though we had the highest per capita costs. Uh -huh. So actually we've had this language going on among health care think tanks for many, many years that we have to get to a better place with people taking individual responsibility for health. Well, those things were all good and well, but then came the question, how are we going to know that we're doing it? Mm -hmm. So the government has put some things in place that we actually are complying with. It's called meaningful use, oh. and an aspect of that is that we have a mechanism for patients and their families to communicate with providers 24-7, as Tara mentioned. So, we know there's a need, there's been a, a need historically for quite a while for that communication, but no real way that the patient could control it. Right. So now, Shell Point is kind of on the forefront with making this a reality. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially in the uh, CCRC environment. Um, we really are probably leaders in that area of information technology. Okay, what are the advantages for Shell Point? One of the things that the portal does, it allows the processes within the medical center itself to be streamlined. So the providers are doing care and putting into their software product information that is uh, critical health elements about this patient. That can be communicated easily and quickly to a referral source, and the resident can easily and quickly access that information rather than waiting days to get, you know, requests for medical records, they can go online and see the kinds of things about their health care or the health information that's being stored on them and make certain that it's correct, uh, download it, take it with them to somewhere else. Um, so they have a, a very immediate way of communicating with the health care team when something's not right or they have questions about what they see. So not only do we have this, this need to communicate that Carol has mentioned, to cut costs, you know, to streamline and communicate, 
we also have medical specialties and we have patients going from, from one doctor to another doctor. How do they communicate? How do we make sure that they're communicating what we understand and how do we give feedback? Is feedback going to be a possibility? Yes, absolutely. Um, possibly in the future there could be surveys, but the resident is uh, free to send a communication through the portal immediately. Uh, to their physician. It goes to the medical team, uh -huh. and the physician gets it after that. So I can see the advantage for the resident then. Mm -hmm. You know, they get their information, they can, can respond. Um, for instance, if your doctor says, I want to know your blood pressure readings for a couple of days, can the patient put that in? Yes. Yeah. Instead of waiting, calling, people translating to other people. All right, now, I hear that there's a blue button. What is that all about? The blue button is kind of the government's way of giving uh, patients a, an identifier to say, this is yours. So most products, like our patient portal that other, even other doctors would have, have a blue button. It's a quick, easy way for an individual to just basically push the blue button, and up comes a summary of all their health uh, critical elements. It would have their their problems listed, it would have their medications listed, it would have the lab values, it could have an, any number of different things, it'll have their allergies on there. So with one button, they get this summary and history, and then they can download it, print it, and uh, make sure that it's correct, hand it to someone else, emergency team, or just another physician that they want to see. Or talk to their family. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, this is information you might want to know about me. So blue button, that's something we do on our computer. Yep, it's a literally a little blue button, and it says blue button right on it. <laughs> can't miss it. You can't miss it. It's fabulous. What else are we going to cover in this class? We're going to review um, the procedures for how to do this, and it's really all for the purpose of improving care coordination, reducing medical errors, mm, improving privacy and security. And in the end, we hope it shows that we're taking credit for wellness management and responsibility for your own health through a documented means. Well, as always, I want to take a few minutes on behalf of our community to say, I know this doesn't just happen. A lot of people work on this to make it happen, and you represent two of the people on the forefront. So we're grateful, as always, for what you do on our behalf. Thank, Thank you. you. And you would be silly to miss this opportunity to come and find out all about the patient portal and easy access. Both of these people will be there to share information with you. Tuesday, September 23rd, from 1 to 2.30 in the Grand Cypress Room. Come and find out what it's all about and how it's really easy access. Herb Sklar was in the studio talking with Terry Kolath about his upcoming master class, Painting a Self-Portrait. Hello everyone, I'm here with Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve. We're talking about yet another new class from Herb. This one is Painting a Self-Portrait. Thank you for joining me, Hi, Herb. more than welcome. Now, a self-portrait is a very different thing to paint than most things, right? Well, it, it's really a journey into oneself. Right. And, and you learn a lot about yourself. Uh, and so this class is gonna be a little different and it's gonna follow a little different format. We're gonna start off with a coffee at my house where we're gonna talk about uh, what it's like to do a self-portrait, how you should sh present yourself, what are you going to wear for the photo session, which, by the way, will be at the new photo studio, and I will take everybody's picture so they, they can paint from it. Um, and I will reveal my secrets for how to get a great sketch that's accurate on the canvas. That's so important in portrait painting, self-portrait or, or just plain portrait painting. You have to start off with a very accurate sketch because if you're off a little here, your eyes look different. If you're off a little there, your mouth, and, and it doesn't quite look like it. So all this is, is very important. But I think the, the real heart of this class is the discovery of, of what you're going to learn. And the class after the coffee at my house, it goes to uh, the photo studio, and so everybody will be prepared based on our discussion what they're going to wear, how they're going to present themselves. Mm -hmm. I take their pictures, and there's a week lapse where I process all this, and, and I could give it to them. Then we start painting. 
and we keep continue paying, though the class officially ends, I think right before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. it doesn't end there, mm -hmm. it doesn't end there, because in January, I'm gonna be giving a lecture on why uh, famous artists like Rembrandt did 20 self-portraits or more, and, and a lot of famous artists did that, and so at that lecture, all the students will be there with their pictures, with their paintings, and uh, one by one they'll show them, and they'll talk about their experience about doing a self-portrait. So you're gonna see all your neighbors with their self-portraits and hear about that experience, and I hope it'll be wonderful, I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be too. Now, one of the things I really appreciate about your coming up with new classes is not only do you extend yourself, a professional artist, but you also help our current artists have opportunities to extend themselves. You know, to make your own sketch, to paint your own self-portrait, it's going to take a painter and another wonderful opportunity. Well, it takes a little more thought than just doing a scenery or something. For instance, this painting, uh, I try to make, I was a lot younger there, wore a glass and a mustache, but besides that, uh, this really tells a story. Mm -hmm. It's an artist sitting at a canvas. The canvas is empty. And that's always the hardest part for most artists, right. is to make that first stroke on that canvas. So this was trying to show what that anxiety was about. You know, self-portrait artist, blank canvas. Interesting, so much about creativity, period. The writer's hardest thing oh, is sure. that first sentence. I, I once had an a, a instructor who said, do you know when you make your first mistake when you're painting? And the class said no, and I said, you make your first mistake when you make your first stroke, and then you spend the rest of the time correcting. So every stroke, and it's so true, because when you start painting and all of a sudden you change something, you say, oh, that's right, but now this is wrong. And so you spend the rest of that time. So this is going to be just a wonderful exploration, this whole class. It really is nice to have a chance to explore. The self has to be kind of like the last frontier, right? Well, yeah, it is. The, fir the first painting, self portrait painting I did really wasn't me, it was my wife and I. We had just retired and uh, I was standing behind her with a palette and she was sitting uh, at a ceramic table so she started to take up ceramics and I started painting. And, uh -huh. and the name of the, the, the painting is The Painter and the Ceramicist. And, and that uh, was the first one I did and that told a story. And, and if you look at it carefully, it even tells more of a story because you can see a little of the Florida Flaunter and background, uh -huh. so you know that that's where it started, you know. Well, if you are interested in extending your abilities as a painter, there's still time to sign up for Painting a Self-Portrait with Herb Sklar, and it's going to be on nine Wednesdays. Penny Modrich of Nautilus gave us a great tech tip on T3 opportunities. Hi, I'm Penny Modrich from Nautilus. I teach in T3. And here is today's tech tip. Do you have an Android device, like a Samsung tablet or cell phone, for instance? Do you need help using the device? Don't be frustrated because all T3 classes seem to be devoted to Apple devices. Find other residents who have the same or similar device and meet with them to coordinate your knowledge and abilities to use these devices proficiently. Then, how about offering a class in the Academy in the Technology Today and Tomorrow T3 section? We want to diversify as much as possible, but we can't become proficient enough to have classes on all the devices that are out there on the market. Your assistance would be most welcome, as we could use more assistants and instructors. And direct from the kitchen of Ruth Duber of Periwinkle, we had a taste of a delicious wedge salad. Hi, I'm Ruth Duber, and this is What's Cooking at Shelf Point. Uh, this happens to be show number 160, and I have my daughter Jane here Yay. with me, and um, <laughs> she also did another show, so... This is her second time Yes, my around. second appearance, yeah. back by popular demand. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna make a salad today because it's so hot mm -hmm. and you really don't want to eat too much that's heavy. And uh, so this is iceberg lettuce, but 
it's really getting popular on menus now um, with all kinds of dressings in that. So I'm going to make a dressing and I'm going to talk a little bit about the fact that it calls for buttermilk. Well, you know, it comes in quarts and nothing smaller. Mm -hmm. um, I have found this product and you keep it in the refrigerator after you open it. It's a powder and it has actually a, a uh, shelf life, I think, that goes to 2017. Wow. <laughs> so it'll last a long time. And you hate to waste the buttermilk, that's for sure. So for our dressing, we need a quarter of a cup of water to make the buttermilk. And a teaspoon that's amazing. of the buttermilk. When your daddy was still around, mm -hmm. I didn't have any trouble getting rid of the, oh, the buttermilk because he loved he it. He loved it. Yeah. We used to use that in muffins all the time, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, uh-huh, Raisin Bran muffins. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can get me a whisk okay. over there. Okay, and then we have a half a cup of mayonnaise. And this is the light mayonnaise and a quarter cup of sour cream. Mm. Mm -hmm. And this is the reduced fat. It's my suggestion, don't ever do the no fat. No fat. <laughs> it just a doesn't. A little fat's a good thing. Always. <laughs> just like butter, a little bit of butter is perfect. Okay. I'm gonna put that in there and I'll let you whisk that okay. for a bit. And I'm going to put in See, the lazy way, here goes the garlic. Yeah, well, you know, it's good. It's all good. <laughs> Your fingers don't get there. all garlicky. Oh, that's mm. perfect, just a little that's bit. That's just a bit. About how much was that, Mom? I would say it was about a quarter to a half, probably a half a teaspoon. Okay, and then we need a quarter teaspoon of Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Everything is better with that, right? Mm. Well, it adds a lot of flavor, so. Okay, perfect. And we need mm. a quarter teaspoon. Just a little bit. And it definitely calls for white vinegar. The distilled. Otherwise it white. might make it too dark, maybe? No, I, it, it's flavor. just the consistency of it and the flavor. So, mm, that's okay. Yummy. Alrighty. Now for this, this is um, two pieces of bacon. Whoops, sorry. Woo. Last time. Getting it all over the place. Didn't mean to do that. Oh well, you'll scoop it up later anyway, so. So in the restaurants, don't they call this a wedge? That's right. Yep. yep it's on the menu. I also have a recipe that is um, for shrimp. Mm. And it's sort of a over creamy. Over the iceberg? Uh-huh. Yummy. Um, with sort of a cream sauce on it, and that's good. So we put that on first? Mm-hmm. And let's get some cheddar cheese. This is making me hungry, Mom. Well, <laughs> that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, it's a little messy, but that's okay. Oh, it looks yummy. Okay, now do you want to spoon the dressing on there? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. You should do it fancy like in the restaurants, right? Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And so they eat, typically they're eating it with a knife and fork, yes? Uh huh, that's right. A different way to eat a salad. I remember when I first had this at some fancy restaurant. I'd never. Never thought I would be cutting a salad with a knife and a fork. Yeah, that's right. There you but go. rope for dressing is very popular. And that's it. Yummy. Good, Perfect for good summer. Good for summer. And I hope <laughs> you'll try it. I'll put it up on the website. Bye-bye. Well, that's it for this week. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in again next week for more news and stories from around your community. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for the weekend of September 20th, 21st, and 22nd.
I'm Kara Minowy, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.